An Afternoon with Itzhak Perlman will take place at NJ Pack in Newark at three in the afternoon. Undeniably, the reigning virtuoso of the violin. Itzhak Perlman enjoys superstar status and rarely afforded to a classical musician. He's beloved for his charm and humanity, but also the joy that he plays with. It's one of the reasons that we love to talk to him here on the WBGO Journal. Maestro, great to see you, and thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. An Evening with Zitzok Perlman captures the highlights of your career through narrative and multimedia elements intertwined with performance. What makes this NJ Pack performance in Newark special for you? Well, I mean, I always like to play there. I mean, first of all, the hall is beautiful. And uh, and this particular program is a lot of fun for me, and usually it's a lot of fun for the audience because uh, it involves, as you said, it involves more than just playing, but reminiscing, talking, uh, looking at some personal photographs and some videos and so on. And it's it's a kind of a nice show uh, that I enjoy doing. And and you know, for me. Anything that I go on the stage, whether it's a concert or a, a, a regular recital or a, a evening with like I'm going to be doing, I feel that if I enjoy it, then hopefully it carries over to the audience. And, uh, you know, every time that we have been doing this thing, everybody has just a terrific time. And so do I. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And we are too. You know, improvisation is huge in jazz, and I've heard you talk about this a little bit, but tell us about the difference when it comes to improvisation with classical music. Well, that's a good question. Classical music and improvisation is much more subtle. Uh, we don't basically improvise. Very rarely do we improvise with actually changing notes like they do in jazz. You know, sometimes you and you listen sometimes all the time when you listen to a to a, a phrase in 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 jazz and it can be improvised and the notes can be totally different the harmonies can be a bit the same but maybe different and so on as i said the classical music improvisation has to do with phrasing and timing and uh and so it's a more subtle thing sometimes when we play uh, uh something that's more baroque an earlier sometimes we can add a little cadenza and so on and i like to improvise as i play but most of the time some of these cadenzas are written out so so there goes out you know more more less improvisation but for me i always feel that Im improvising has to do with how i feel about the phrase at the time and not to necessarily do exactly what i'm doing today as though I did it the same way yesterday or the day before or last year or two years ago. Because for me, every concert is a live performance, is is an, a live experience and a new experience and a spontaneous experience. So, and and for me as, as, as a player, it's very important because then it goes, the audience somehow feels it. That it, you are not just going through the motions by saying something that you have said many, many times, especially when you play repertoire that you have repeated, like if you play a Beethoven concerto or a Beethoven sonata and so on, if for the hundreds of hundreds time and so on, every time should be a new experience. And for me, that's subtly, you know, that's kind of an improvisation that what we have in classical music. And when you're talking about phrasing and things like that, that's where emotion comes in for you. And I, I would say if you and I have anything in common and somebody would say, what? You have something in common with the maestro? And that would be we're emotional. And music makes us emotional. We cry when we hear. When you were playing in Schindler's List, you know, Steven Spielberg's masterpiece movie, I cried for hours after that. And so the, <laughs> but but so did so did many others. And you and you know why. But when we talk about sound, sound has been something that has fascinated you from early on. Started playing the violin at, at the age of four, and you, you got this sound. Talk about how sound really has taken over since, a, since you were a young child. Well, look, uh, anything that you hear, whether it's a violinist, 
or a pianist or a singer or a wind player or a brass player, the first thing that comes to you, to your ear, is their sound. Now, I would like to just, I always say that there are two different, uh, it's a matter of semantics. Now, there is sound and there is tone. And for me, sound is more of a technical thing. You know, what do you do with your hands to, to produce a good, healthy sound? But tone is something that has to do with beauty and has to do with something that comes naturally. And that goes obviously with singers. You know, you can hear, for example, uh, five sopranos and five tenors, and they would sing and they would be very musical and they sing very, very well, but each person would have a different sound. And that you're born with. They would have a different voice, a different tone. And I think that uh, playing an instrument is a little more subtle with it, but it's still the same thing. People ask me, what makes you sound like you? I can't tell you that. I'll be, it's because I sound like me because it's me. Now, what do I do to get a, a sound that is, is pretty or beautiful? I mean, I can do several things. Uh, I can do with vibrato, I can do with the bow pressure, the speed and so on. All of those mechanical things I can do um, properly, but the actual quality of the sound and what makes this sound uh, specific for me, I can't tell you. It's just me. It's you, and maybe it all goes back to your days at Juilliard with your instructor, the legendary Dorothy DeLay, who didn't just tell you, do this. She made you think about what you were doing, and thus it becomes, it's on Perlman's piece. Well, in some ways, yes, but with a tone, I think you're born with it. And I think that that's what you sort of hear in your in your head. And you cannot, you know, there is, I mean, there is, as I said, you know, technically you can do up to a point and then you will, but you will still sound individual. It'll, it'll be you. You know, so some people says, oh, I heard you play on the radio and I knew it was you. Now, why did they know it was me? It's because I have a specific sound. You know, and when I, when I, when I hear uh, uh, any recording of fantastic fiddle players, I usually recognize who they are, although these days everybody sounds so good that, you know, it's a little difficult to recognize. But when you talk about when I was growing up and so on, we're talking about people like Fritz Kreisler and Yasha Heifetz and Stern and, and Menuhin and David Oistra and Franciscati and so on. Each one of them had their own sound, their own tone. And so you could recognize them by their tone. And if you would ask them, what did you do to get such a tone? They would say, that's just me. You know, that's the way I play. You know, so it's it's like a fingerprint. You know, everybody has a different, you know, uh, audio fingerprint. And your fingerprint has resulted in 16 Grammy Awards, four Emmy Awards, a Kennedy Center Honor, a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, and many others. That was a great segue. That was such <laughs> great segue. I love that. <laughs> so we know the differences in all these years from that 13-year-old that was on the Ed Sullivan Show and amazed people with uh, how young you were and be able to play like you can. We know the, the differences. What are the similarities from that 13 year old to the maestro now? I hope not too many. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I, I I don't think, you know, the, the only thing that's similar, I, everybody always told me that that I had a good, a good tone, that my tone was very, very, but it was special. So I suppose from that point of view, you could, you can say that, but, uh, and also, um, there is certain uh, technical uh, facility that made things uh, easy to do, you know. And 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 I found, you know, I had to practice, obviously, but in many ways it came sort of easy, you know. It it did not have to. Uh, it was not as intense as some some people, I suppose. I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. 
Having performed worldwide throughout the U.S. and many other venues around the world, state dinner at the White House honoring Queen Elizabeth II, President Barack Obama's inauguration. One thing I want to know, was there ever a moment that you felt pressure as a violin virtuoso? You know your stuff and you know that you're going to present such a fabulous performance, but did any of those events create more pressure? Not really. I mean, the thing is that my concentration is to do the best that I can do. And it doesn't matter whether uh, I'm playing at the White House or whether I'm playing in a small town uh, or whether I'm playing in a big town or in so on. For me, the most important thing is for me to be satisfied with the performance that I gave and to know that I've given 110%. And that it's me, that it's a good representation of what I can do. And sometimes it, sometimes I think, oh, well, you know, tonight was okay, but I can do better and so on. But it has, for me, it has really nothing to do with the event. Although the event is very exciting. You know, when you think about playing for dignitaries and playing in the White House and so on and so forth and playing in special events, that's extremely exciting. But when it comes down to the actual performance, the the attitude for me is the same. Do the best that you can and represent yourself and give the audience something that you feel about the music so that they can hear what you, you know, the here is my, my rendition of this particular piece and I would like to share it with you. And that for me is the most important thing. How fun has it been for you from this young kid who opened up a book and saw a picture of the Empire State Building and said, yeah, someday. Yeah. You live in New York City. You're you're known around the world. But to be here in places like NJ Pack in New York City, it it's it's such an amazing story about you, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I I I don't I don't look at it from a perspective, you know. I just go along as I have to go along, you know, and uh, I'm very all I can tell you is that and we were, I was talking to some people the other day, I feel so lucky that I make a living at something that I really love. And I think that that's really, that's the greatest goal in life for anybody is to make a living at something that you are absolutely married to, something that you love so much. And for me, that is sort of, what can I tell you? People say, "What, what, what, uh, what's the future for you? What, 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 do you, what else do you have to do?" And, and I always say, "My hope is that I would never get bored with what I do." And so far, I'm not. You know, I'm doing. You know, I, I have three things that I do in music right now, which is, you know, obviously playing the instrument, teaching, and conducting, and they're all involved with each other. They all support each other. And I, so I'm not bored with anything that I do. Everything is very, very exciting to me, even though I've done it for quite a few years. <laughs> you mentioned teaching, and I'm so glad to hear you talk about doing something you love because uh, the self-portrait behind me is a picture of my daughter, Casey, who is a special education teacher. And she said, Dad, if I've learned anything from you, mind you, I've been in public radio, that money isn't the big thing. You have to love what you do. And she Absolutely. says, that's what she took from me. Now she's doing what she loves. What you love is to wow the audiences. But those audiences have also been through very difficult times. And we still have anti-Semitism widespread. What are your thoughts on how we can get better? I just feel that one has to keep talking about it all the time. I think because you have to always remember I think remembering is very, very important. Because when you re because if you don't remember, people think that it's gone, it doesn't exist, it, it goes away, it's a story. Every time. But the thing is, unfortunately, what's been happening these days is helps us to remember. <laughs> and uh, and that's very upsetting. And so uh, you know, one has to just always uh, pay attention to to what what's what's going on. And I'm just hoping that uh, things will get better. It's I'm I'm a I'm a great optimist, 
that's that's uh i feel that that's uh it's really necessary otherwise you'd get upset all the time but things are not so good when that it comes to but look the world is a little crazy these days you know what's been going on is is just insane so um so i i think we are lucky to have music all i can tell you that we are very very lucky to have music because you know you know you can you can look at you can look at the uh, news and so on and but then for me to go to a concert and to listen to you know an opera or a recital or or, or an orchestral concert it it's it kind of cleanses the soul i think i think so I'm, and i'm i'm lucky to be to be a musician i'm lucky to be in the arts very lucky just two more questions is there a specific piece that you'll be playing at nj Pack? that will give us more hope when we think about what you just talked about? Well, the obvious piece that I'll be playing is Schindler, uh, the theme from Schindler's List. I always play that. And, you know, I'll tell you about this piece. It's it's the most amazing piece because the only one that people always ask, could you play that? And, and no matter where I play it, whether I play it in the States, whether I play it in... Europe, where they played in the Far East and so on, it's it's the only one that people say, oh, I hope you're going to do the thing from Schindler's List. So I'm going to do that. And that always gives people hope. And this may be the same answer that you that you just gave, but the lights are going out in every hall in a few days. And Itzhak Perlman only gets to play one more piece on his wonderful violins what would that piece be and why that i can't answer that it's a very very difficult you know when people ask me what's your favorite piece and i say the one i'm playing at the moment because it has to be my favorite piece otherwise if i if i believe in the piece um then it will sound convincing so my question to you is that I don't I don't really know when if I if I'm in the mood for something, that's a terrible question. <laughs> <laughs> you know why it's terrible because I can't answer it. You know? but, so uh, I'll give you something that you can answer. Yeah, yeah. You spend so much time, as you mentioned, teaching. Someone, as you mentioned, tone is is you know you're born with it. So how does a youngster know that they may have the tone that's needed, not obviously to be a virtuoso like you, but to enjoy playing the instrument and getting the most out of it. Yeah, but the thing about the tone is that it's very subtle. You know, everybody plays well. You know, the level of playing these days is so high and people play with a beautiful sound and so on and so forth. So from that point of view, all they need to do is to do their best and to practice, I always, you know, my 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 old uh, my old uh, sentence that I always use: practice slowly, because if you practice slowly, you forget slowly. If you practice fast, you forget very fast. So slow practicing it soaks in the brain, and you can accomplish much more. And you've got to think about practicing as to what is the purpose of your practicing. And so that's my advice to 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 students. I always say, don't hurry. Practice slowly. And playing nine hours a day is not the answer. You know, I, I'd rather have an hour or two hours of practicing that you can really think what you're doing and think what it, why are you doing it and listen to what you're doing. That, for me, can accomplish more than just spending all the time, you know. So as you know, WBGO is jazz and blues and and much more. But is there a jazz performer from back in the day or today that you particularly enjoy or would like to play with? Well, I mean, if we're talking about jazz performers that are no longer with us, uh, I mean, I I was very very lucky to to have a re make a recording with Oscar Peterson, which I just love. And, but my first love with the jazz pianist was, of course, Art Tatum. And uh, listening to Art Tatum for the first, I never forget, for the first time I listened, and I didn't know who it was because it was somebody playing the Dvorak humoresque. 
in a jazz style. And I said, this is amazing stuff. Who is this? And then they said, this was our Tatum. And that's the first time that I heard. And I think I was sort of maybe 16, 17 years old. I just heard it by accident on the radio. So, and, and as a result of that, you know, of course, Oscar Peterson are very, very much affected by, by, you know, the, the style. And of course the amazing technique of our Tatum, which, you know, a lot, I just read the other day, you know, how some of the great pianists, I mean, like Rachmaninoff and Vladimir Orovitz were quite famous, quite quite jealous of his amazing technique that he had. So, you know, he's one of the people that, that I enjoyed. I also in, I made a recording with uh, Andre Previn, who was himself a wonderful, wonderful jazz pianist. As, I mean, he was just a terrific musician, a great, wonderful conductor, and and played, you know, classical piano, but wonderful jazz pianist. Is there something that we don't know about you that you'd like to share? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> I wouldn't share it because that's why I don't want to share it. <laughs> <laughs> but you will share a lot during an afternoon with the Top Chroma NJ Pack in Newark. What a wonderful performance it will be, as always. Maestro, thanks so much for joining us on the WBGO Journal. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you.